Okay, I think we're live. So welcome everyone. My name is Paul Lecursi. I'm joined here with Amruta. Um, and today we're gonna really just be speaking about CockroachDB at a high level and, and going through Cockroach University, which is our free online training course. Um, and, and specifically kind of, you know, with using this as a premise of I'm, I'm a salesperson at Cockroach I'm on the sales team at Product Evangelist. And um, really just uh, have no knowledge of, of databases, have never really um, used SQL or have programmed in my life. So this is all very new for me. Um, and I'm gonna get started and, and show you how easy it is to really just uh, spin up a cluster and a single node cluster um, with CockroachDB and, and get that running on my Mac laptop. So um, we're gonna go through the course, get that started, go through some tasks that you might see um, during that, during the course itself. Um, and if you have any questions during this live stream that we're doing, please just ask away. I'll do my best to answer it as, as, as to my best ability. Um, and, um, really again, like our goal here is to, to help you. If you're a student, if you are maybe, uh, just getting into engineering, you're learning about technology, you just start interested in learning. Um, really this is for you. Maybe if you are, uh, a professional engineer, you've been doing this for, for your entire career. Um, this might not be the show for you, unless you just want to see a salesperson maybe suffer a little bit getting through the stuff that you guys do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so uh, really for anyone who wants to just get involved and Amuja, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself and, and give a little background as sure. well. Yeah, hi, uh, I'm Amrita. I am now the developer advocate at Cocker Labs. Uh, before this, I was the uh, tech writer on the education team. Uh, so I've written about Cockroach TV for the past four years, uh, but I've never tried it live. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> we're doing it live, we're doing it live. So thank you all for just joining us um, and we're gonna get into it. So let me just share my screen and hopefully you all see this. So what we have here is a terminal, which is something I really <laughs> just started learning about that's on my uh, laptop. And then we have um, the actual Cockroach University course, um, which you can find at university.cockroachlabs.com. Um, and uh, really, you can, it's very easy to kind of get started. You, you put your, your email in, you register, and again, it's free, completely free. So we have a bunch of different courses. We're gonna be really focusing on practical first steps with CockroachDB here. Um, but there's also getting started with CockroachDB, which is a really great way to just um, learn about database history in general, but then moving into distributed SQL as well and, and more particularly uh, CockroachDB. So uh, that's a really great place to just start, um, I would say. And then practical first steps, as you can see, it's kind of gives you the tools um, to get you moving in, with CockroachDB and spinning up a, a cluster, which is what we're going to be doing today. Um, so, uh, let's get into it. We're going to just resume the course because I, I did play around with this yesterday, uh, just kind of going through some of the stuff, uh, reading through. So as you can see, we have practical first steps, um, on the left-hand side, we have different chapters and we're going to be focusing specifically on chapter one. Um, now it's important as well to this kind of welcome page gives you a little bit of a background of Cockroach. Uh, university and cockroach db in general but uh, again we're going to be focusing on chapter one here um really focusing oops there we go um a little technical diff difficulty uh but uh really focusing on instructions to install cockroach db now um i believe that the homebrew is already installed right amruta we already did this yesterday so okay great that's good to know so with the homebrew, this is really the easiest way for you to get started on your laptop. Uh, and again, we have Windows. Um, I'm gonna be using a Mac. So um, you just really copy this binary and it's worth mentioning to um, don't copy this money sign here. Um, just go and copy entirely there and you would copy and then paste into the terminal to um, begin this to begin kind of downloading and installing CockroachDB. Anything to add there? 
no we already did the first step the installing homebrew step yesterday and the reason we did this as like prep for the stream is because it can take a while so be patient with it it kind of gets uh like you might question if it is actually working but it is working in the background uh just like fyi it takes a while um yeah yeah, that was a that was a funny kind of surprise for me. Like, who's never? I, I'm used to something kind of like going fast with installing. It was it was a funny thing. Um, so yeah, that's something we already got started. Um, and um, so we're gonna skip this step. But really, again, it's super easy to to install. Copy this binary, paste it into the terminal itself, and then um, you are going to use the second um, binary as well. Correct to after, after installing um, to kind of complete the process? Yes, so the first step is to install Homebrew, which is a packet manager, which will help, like which will do all the things that you need to do to install CockroachDB. And then the second uh, step is to use Homebrew to actually install CockroachDB. So step one, install Homebrew. Step two, install CockroachDB using Homebrew. Awesome, great. Um, and, and then from there, we're just gonna move over to our first, um, oh. I think we need to do the second step. You need to install, or uh, you need to do prove install Cockroach TV. And thank, that, that's why you're here to help me out. Thank, thank you so much. So we're going to copy this mm -hmm. and go to our terminal here, paste, press enter. It's doing its thing. So updating homebrew. Looking good so far. You love to see that. All right, perfect. And Amruta, we know it's downloaded when you get your prompt back. There we go. We get the prompt back, which is this, correct? Yep. The Paul um, R. Percy. Yep, you can also check if Cockroach TV is installed uh, by running Cockroach version. Great, and I'm going to do that right now. Cockroach version, enter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it did. We have the yeah, awesome. installed. All right, first step. High five. Done. Boom. Moving forward. So, um, from there, we're going to move on to starting a, or our first lab here. Starting insecure. Uh, single node cluster. So we're going to skip the videos, which I highly recommend. Go go through the videos. They do a really good job at breaking it down for you. Um, again, we just and for for time itself, we're just going to really focus uh, on on the labs itself and um, and and make it through uh, that way instead of uh, making you watch us watch a video, which might not be fun for you. So um, here we go. So we're going to read this over here have a have cockroach db installed before you begin this lab done um and the instructions start an insecure single node cluster on your machine using cockroach start single node insecure cluster okay boom so i'm going to copy this command again paste into terminal enter and we're going to be wanting right to see this correct command when you know it's 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 working correct like warning running in this in secure mode great and i think we're good yep nice we're good looks like this um and so we should be able to now kind of enter more commands and, and running um and and it's it, we're, we're starting that insecure that the insecure single node cluster so um we can correct me if i'm wrong can we check the actual um the ui of this now yes you can uh so what we have so far is we installed cockroach db and we started a single node cluster in like under five minutes so that's super cool it's like brag uh, and you can check the ui uh, to make sure that the cluster is running so in the output you can see a thing called web ui uh, i think it's the second uh, row in the output yeah, right the here yep that one so yep. just copy the http link oops there you go here copy 
and look, we have the UX. You can actually see the node that's running, node status live. So we're installed. We're good, which is the awesome. UI, yeah, the UI is one of my favorite parts about Copper TV because I used to be the UI writer for a very long time. So it's like my favorite feature. It's really cool. And I know that there are also ways to, I think, for our, our, our manage and cockroach db uh service you can actually see like, the map of your nodes that are running correct yes uh you need an enterprise license for that but the node map is really really cool uh when when you have a distributed cluster like nodes distributed all over the globe it's really cool to see the nodes pop up that's awesome yeah and um so again you can see we have uptime here how many replicas capacity usage memory use cpus version, again, the status being live, that's how you know it's working. And right now we're, we're doing a single node, right? So um, really this is where you get to see the magic happening, um, which is awesome. Um, and we also have these tabs over here, metrics, which is cool as well. Let's see capacity, the database itself, sessions, transactions, which is great statements jobs advanced debug which i don't know anything really about uh, but we go back to overview overview here so great that's really uh our, our second task is getting the the single node uh up and running uh with the practical first step so great job moving forward and again what we're doing here just to reiterate um if you're if you're kind of exploring cockroach db and, and you're learning i think this will be a great session for you to go back to just to see somebody doing it and, and talking about it um, live in this kind of format, um, which is which is nice. Um, so the next step after here in the university would be connecting uh, with the SQL shell. Again, you can watch the video. Uh, they do a great job at breaking it down for you. Um, you can see the code samples as well and, and kind of what you're gonna be learning at a high level, connecting to a local cluster with the SQL shell using this work, Cockroach workload command um and and then at the end of it a quiz as well to, to kind of test your knowledge but again i don't know if you want to see me do a quiz right now so we're gonna we're gonna move to our lab uh which is using the sql shell so instructions here are to start an insecure single node cluster um in a new terminal so correct me if i'm wrong i'm going to be copying this command or no we already did that right we just uh, spun up the single node cluster um so yeah we already did that so now we can move on to the next step which is connecting to the cluster okay connecting to the cluster awesome um which would be there so here we're going to be then going through actually doing some coding correct yes so now you open a new tab so we have the coverage node running in the steps. We need to open a new tab so we can interact with it. Perfect. And then run cockroach SQL insecure. Awesome. Copy this right here. This is where the command you can find it. Yes. Cockroach SQL insecure. Enter. Yeah, and it's going to the <laughs> So I thought we're doing it. Yeah. Uh, so what we did so far is we installed the binary, we started a single node cluster, and in uh, you weren't testing it. If you already have an app ready, you would then connect your app to the database so that it can interact with the database and like insert data, read data, query data, and all of those things. But we're just try taking Copper TV for a spin right now. Uh, so we don't really need to go into the app side of things. Uh, but we still need a way to connect it so we can just test things out. So what Cockroach TV does is it has this inbuilt binary that lets you uh, connect to the app and test it out. Uh, so that's another cool thing about the Cockroach TV binary that it comes with a built-in SQL client. That's awesome. Um, and thank you for, for breaking that down. So um, the next step then will be if we're, we're running here, we're using the SQL shell. Um, and is that then creating a table? We move on to creating a table from here, or um, we're going to go to troubleshooting? I think, uh, no, um, let's first we'll see the databases that come preloaded with your cluster. So uh, can you run the show databases comment? Sure. Databases, boom. Awesome. Right. So all your clusters come 
preloaded with the default DB Postgres and the system. These are internal system databases. We need don't we like the user doesn't need to worry about them, but it's just good to know what they are. They are internal databases that you don't need to worry about. Great. Awesome. So yeah, and you can see that you're do, when you're kind of going through the course itself, um, you know you're 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 doing something right when the output looks exactly like this, and and they they make it very clear for you here um, in terms of that next step to verify that. Um, so it's worth just mentioning that. So if, if things are looking like this so far, you're doing well, um, which is great. Um, and then we're going to troubleshoot. So here we have a problem, right? This is again like a lab. So when inputting the show databases uh, command, we are going to um, have this as well. Uh, we're gonna copy and paste this into the uh, terminal. Um, no, I think it is more about, I think it's just telling you to look for the forgotten semicolon, but you did it right. You did put the semicolon in, so good job. <laughs> Thank you. Um, great. Uh, and then your windows. Awesome. Great. So I think we're for this step we're we're doing well. Um, again, you'd be going to creating a modifying table here um, and watch the video. Uh, and now we're going to set up the single node cluster uh, that's running and connected to the SQL shell that we had in the previous lab. Um, so here we have our instructions, the SQL shell created table called products with the following columns. Okay, so this is where it gets a little bit into the weeds. Uh, this is the fun part. Um, so from my knowledge, we are going to, and I might need some help here, Amruta. We are, we're, we're moving on to, I'm, I'm gonna try to guess what we're gonna do just by having this here. Are we moving to having this uh, command products and we're gonna paste it into the terminal itself. So this is a bit tricky. So now we have a handheld part of the course to more of like, let, let's try things out, out on our own part of the course. So what is asking us to do is form a SQL statement that can achieve this result. So they want us to write a SQL statement uh, that will create a table of called products in the database. So I put up the link for that. I'll put in chat. Oh, oh great. So we just really need um, to write a create table statement now. So the syntax for create table is create table. Create table. The if not exists. If. If it not exists. Mm -hmm. And then and the name of the table is, what do they want to do? UID, correct? No, the name of the table. So they want us to create a table called products. Products, yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. That's the name of the product, uh, table. And then uh, bracket. So that this is just the usual SQL syntax is that you give the keywords, then you give the parameters for the thing that you want to create and a semicolon. Uh, so that's just like taking down the, the syntax is a uh, create table is we're we telling the database to create a table. Uh, if it all, if we already have a table products, then don't create a second one. Uh, but we don't have one yet. So it can go ahead and create a table called product. And then now we are telling it the columns we want inside uh, the table. Uh, so open bracket. Open bracket. And then uh, let's put in the columns that they specify in the course, which is ID of, uh, yeah, UUID. No, you got it right, ID. There we go, UUID. Mm -hmm. And they also want us to make this the primary key. So UUID space primary key. It's primary key. And comma. comma. Yep. Name. And, yep. Incorrect. Mm -hmm. comma, quantity. Type. In, yep. Um, no. Just in. Quantity, INT. Yep. Perfect. Price. 
decimal. Yep. And then close bracket. And semicolon. Close bracket uh, and semicolon. Yeah, okay. yeah. Awesome. Yay. Wonderful. Table. Good We're doing job. it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm so happy this works. I'm so happy it's working too. <laughs> Um, great. That's awesome that we have that, that, that working. So, um, from here and is there anything in terms of the actual UI that changes or no, it, it's, it stays about the same. Um, I, you can go to the databases, um, thing. I think it should show up there. I, I don't actually see it. Awesome. Yeah. Great. And I think you can also go to the statements uh, tab. Great. And all the statements, yeah. Awesome. And we and within the statements, we have the latency rows affected. Very cool. Great. So we try to make this, I guess, as easy as possible for you to digest and, and with, the, with the UI being there as well, which is great. Um, so, so far things are going very well. And mm -hmm. that is really all of the labs in terms of what we're doing for the first chapter. Mm -hmm. um, and we still have some, some more time. Um, we, can, we can kind of like filter some questions. I don't know if there's been any questions within the, within the chat. I haven't seen, but um, uh, I don't believe so. No, the only question is from Dan asking, did a salesperson just spend more than 10 minutes? Yes, they did. Yes, yes, I did. Um, and and yeah, so we can, I mean, I know, Amrita, we talked about some some kind of basic SQL statements that you had kind of planned. We, I think we have some more time, so uh, we can kind of go through that. And I think um, if we were going to do this again for, for another time, maybe chapter two as kind of having cluster fundamentals as being um the, the next part of this but i'm happy to kind of go through some more some more learning if you if you want to help me walk walk me through it sure yeah um so do you want to open the notion doc that i shared uh with you earlier uh it's in the other doc that we have perfect let me go to that great so this is a workshop that i run for uh at hackathons uh, it's for people who are very, very new to SQL, like uh, high school students even. Uh, so for them, what we do is we spin up, uh, we use the Cockroach uh, DB docs, uh, the interactive tutorial in the Cockroach DB docs. The thing is, we have a lot of useful resources to learn SQL and Cockroach DB. So the, the Cockroach University course we're going through right now is one really good resource. The other really good resource is the interactive tutorial. And then I kind of have them create a database of all the dogs at Cockroach Labs, and then we uh, try to play around with that data. So we can go through that uh, on your cluster if you want. I would love to do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. OK. So uh, step one. So what we're doing right now is we all, we all are so far, we have been working the default DB. That's the DB that comes built in the Cockroach DB. But that's not always the DB you want to use. Sometimes you want to create your own database. Uh, so the statement to do that is create database, like plain English. So let's create a database called dogs at CRL. You can just copy paste. Uh, yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. The whole the whole thing. Oh, the entire create database dogs. Uh -huh. There we go. Make it very easy for you. Okay, perfect. And again, what does the the semicolon as like an actual command? What does that do? What what is it? Is it for kind of uh, making sure that the command happens. I know um, if, if you can kind of just like get into that a little bit, it's this, like for somebody who doesn't know anything about it. Sure, so the semicolon is just like telling the system that that's where the command ends. It's like the period at the end of a sentence, just telling uh, like the listener of like, okay, I'm starting the next scene, but this statement is now over and I'm starting the next one. Uh, so that's exactly what the semicolon does for SQL is that signifies the end of that command. Awesome. And so if you were not to add the semicolon, is it a continuation of the same command moving forward, like in sequential kind of order? Yes. So what it will do is that it won't, uh, you can try that if you want, or just delete the semicolon and press enter and we'll see what happens. 
So it won't finish that thing unless you give a sem semicolon because it is waiting for that thing so it can start processing the statement. Okay, and that's where the arrow comes in, right? It's yeah, so the arrow is like, oh, do you have any more things you want to tell me before I start processing the statement? So it's like okay. a prompt of like, okay, I'm listening. I'm still listening. Is there any other instruction you need to give me? Wonderful, awesome. Great. So give a semicolon again. Okay. There we go. Yeah, I agree with an error. It's fine. Just uh, it's telling you that there is a syntax error because that syntax doesn't uh, make sense to the system. So because it gave gave the peer database uh, thing twice, mm. so it process it right. So all you need to do is just uh, paste the statement again with the semicolon, and it should work. So now basically it refreshes itself. So yeah. Essentially, you can do it again. Wonderful. And in this situation before, as I press enter without the semicolon, I would just put the semicolon for that next statement to make sure that um, I, I wouldn't need the entire command. I would just need the semicolon to make sure that the the, the command proceeded. Yes. So awesome. when you got that arrow, I think if you're given just the semicolon there, it should have worked. It's my intuition. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. All right. I'm seeing if you have a chat question. Okay. Cool. Um, so now we created a database called um, docs at CRL. But if you see, we are still using the default DB. So we just created a database, but we didn't tell the system that that's the database we want to use. So that's what the next statement is, is to specify that I want to use the docs at CRL database. So awesome. let's paste that. Great. So use docs at CRL. Boom. So now if you see, uh, can you, um, yeah, can you make your terminal smaller because your name is kind of covering up the output? Oh. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now if you see the uh, the database that was being used changed from default DB to docs at CRL in the prompt. So yeah. now now all the tables uh, and data like anything we do going further will be done in the docs at CRL database. Great, and so this would be somewhat of like an application within Cockroach DB that's running on Cockroach DB. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. That's great. So now let's create a table within the docs at CRL database. And so this is kind of similar to the command that I did when we were first spinning up the cluster by having mm -hmm. the brackets and, and naming the actual ID um, mm -hmm. and and moving forward. So great. So you would be doing this with another database within uh, within CockroachDB running on top of it, essentially, right? Say that again. You would be this kind, this similar command that we did with uh, kind of running the the first database that we ran for the university course. This yes. is just another way of, of of running it as well. It it's the exact thing. So what we did there was we created a table called products inside the default DB. Now we are create, creating a table called dogs inside the dogs at CRL DB. So we are doing the exact same things in just two different databases. Just practice. Great. This is awesome. I'm having a blast doing this. So, <laughs> Me too. This is awesome. Learning something. Great. So, creating the table. Cool. So, what we did now is we created a table uh, with the the columns of the table are ID because we need a unique ID to, for each dog. Then we gave uh, a column called name so that we can store all the names of all the dogs that Cockroach has. Then we also created another column with. Um, for the humans corresponding to each dog, so we can track who belongs to which, which dog belongs to which human. And then the location, because everybody's distributed right now, so I want to know where all my furry friends are. Um, so that's all we did right now. That's that's great. Are these real? Have, did you actually get data from, from people who are working at Cockroach Labs? I mean, yeah, because I used to hang out with the dogs every day and I miss them. So I, <laughs> Were people? I, I, I'm so I got hired when during uh, during really the pandemic. So I'm, I'm I'm only seven months in. So I never had the office experience. Oh, Were dogs part of office 
office oh, kind of uh, life. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was my favorite. That was my favorite part about Cockroach Labs, and that is the thing that I miss the most about working from home is that because I can have like Zoom calls and video calls with the humans, but the dogs kind of get antsy after a while and they kind of wander off and I can't play with them and we can't take them to the dog park. Like it was a big ritual to take the dog for a walk and then go get chai and things. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. I'll stop gushing about the dogs because they're really, really cute. <laughs> I would, uh, I would personally, I, I can't wait to, to have a dog, but uh, I would love to bring the dog in, a dog into the office, but that's great. It's awesome that you have, um, just uh, all this data ready to go. Yeah. It's important. Yeah, it's very important for my mental health. <laughs> exactly. All right, so continuing on. So we, we created the database. We, we have this kind of use case here for dogs at CRL. Mm -hmm. We create the table. And mm -hmm. now we're, as we're managing this database, we're going to show tables, right? So this is the SQL yeah. statement as show tables. Yes. Um, so just to make sure that the system did what we asked it to do, just to confirm that we can just show tables. Okay. Let me. Can, in this case, can you just type it out, or does it have to be capitalized for somebody who doesn't know? Hmm. No, it's just uh, preference. But this would work. Show tables. Yeah. Uh, but with the semicolon. Semicolon. Can't forget the semicolon. Yeah. So uh, I'll give you, so, okay, first, it did create a table called dogs, so yay, good job. Uh, and so when I was a writer and uh, I used to write docs that, uh, docs that other people would read, I used to like do the whole syntax of capitalizing the right things, but now that n nobody reads what I write, like behind the scenes stuff, it is like the lazy way out. So this would totally work. The, in, in terms of the lowercase? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm I'm already starting. I, I I'm my my fundamentals. I'm already starting off lazy if I'm not capitalizing. I'm not doing it the right way. I'm learning. I, 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 <laughs> great. Well, awesome. So now we checked it. basically by showing table, it's working, right? We can see yeah. we have the table name dogs. Type is the table owner. Great, wonderful. And then here for this kind of final step for managing the database, um, altering the table. So this is like an extra thing I uh, include in the workshop. So what I want to uh, convey through the workshop is that you don't get the schema, you might not get the schema right the first time, but that doesn't mean you can't alter it or you can't correct it. So the way to do that is through the alter state build statement. So the scenario I use for the workshop is that we created a table with the dogs, the dog name, the human name, the location, but I forgot to add uh, a column for their favorite treat because now that I'm fully vaccinated, I can go, go visit them and I want to bring their favorite treats. So uh, this is the way to alter the schema to uh, make sure that we have all the information we need. So let's do that. Let's add another column called favorite treat. Great. And so you would do that by copying, uh, would you copy this one full statement or would you have to split them up into like alter table, dogs, enter, mm -hmm. or would it just be one entire uh, statement? One entire statement. It's like English, right? You're telling the system to alter the table called dogs by adding a column called favorites, treats of type string. It is very human readable. Uh, that's kind of the selling points of SQL. So yeah, and I think with kind of bringing it back to to obviously we're working on cockroach, but I think with that, um, that's I feel like it's a major reason why cockroach DB has the SQL layer on top as it being really easy to just use. And again, I think this statement of, of if I'm able to be using this, um, the really anybody can, and and that's if you're learning um, or if you're a developer, we really want this database to be. Um, your the database that you choose every time that you're building an application um, because it's really easy to use because the UI is nice and, and easy to follow um, and having that SQL layer I think really makes it that you have that relational database um, being that we are Postgres wire compatible um, and making it super easy to just to just use and on top of it kind of bringing it back a little bit here um, having the functionalities of of consistency within the database itself. 
um, kind of relational database model and also um, the functionality of being really scalable uh, in a way that maybe that you would find and easy to use um, like a NoSQL database. So kind of taking the best of, the, of, of those worlds and putting them into one database and combining them um, to be a distributed SQL database with CockroachDB. Um, uh, so it's awesome. It's great to see like, this just being, um, this, this actively using the SQL statements and seeing how easy it is to the mm -hmm. point that you just, that it, it's just English language really. Um, and that's the beauty of it. Yeah, uh, I'll say it gets trickier as we get like get into the more more advanced statements. But you're absolutely right that the getting started part, part, the first five minutes experience part is really really simple. And the reason we recommend starting with Cockroach DB because let's be honest, you if you're building just like a hackathon project or a small project just as a side hobby, you can totally go with Postgres. Uh, a single node Postgres cluster will just like database will work just fine. The thing with Cockroach DB though is if your app takes off and if you have to scale, that's not the like that's not the point where you want to be thinking about, oh, how do I make my database work for this new flux of users? If you get started with Cockroach DB, you can still get the easy getting started experience with Postgres. And it also future proofs your app if it takes off because it will just scale as your app is. Um, so it's like the best of both worlds, like you said, the easy getting started experience and making your app scale proof for the future. Which is just awesome. It's 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 truly kind of like innovating into the future of, of what databases can do. And I, it, it's great to, to kind of just see this again in, in the process. And um, all right, moving forward, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to keep going with this. With yeah. this ultimate. So in, actually interacting with the data, this is a little bit different, Wait, right? Did so, we, we didn't do the ultra table thing. I mean, we oh, we did. <laughs> Sorry, I got lost. Did we did we not do that? No, uh, we can do that now. Awesome. Let's do it then. I was having a great time speaking. Yeah, me too. So, it's fun. It's very fun. Um, so altering the table um, for favorite treats. So pressing mm -hmm. it here. And it's done. Good. Awesome. Great. And so that is basically going through that first step of or first kind of task with managing the database schema, actually. Right, so we uh, set up, so in the managing the database, uh, the major SQL statements to uh, understand are creating a database, creating a table, the use database command, and if you need it, the uh, alter, uh, alter command. Um, so that those are like the bare minimum SQL statements you need to know to get started with Cockroach DB. But now we have a database set up, we have a table set up, now we can start playing with the data inside the database. So the first thing is we need to insert data into the database. Uh, so that's what the first statement is for. Um, you're just going to input all the information of my furry friends at Cockroach Labs. So, and, and with this, right, it, it kind of bringing it back to having that standard SQL language as just insert into, and then you have the dogs and in parentheses, you're having the ID, the name, who their owner is and where they're located because of the distributed kind of nature of the problem set, right? Um, right. So I can break it down for you. So it's like insert into, self-explanatory, into the table. Which table do you want me to use? The docs table. And then which columns do you want to input? So if you see, we have we created columns named ID, name, uh, human, and location. And then for each of like the columns, we are now for each of them. So we actually left out a column in this list. We didn't include the favorite treat uh, column because I wanted to specify you can, you can selectively put information into a database. And the way to do that is like, I don't want to input the favorite uh, treat information yet. I just want to focus on these four columns first. Does that? The, yeah. No, it makes, a lot, it makes a lot of sense. It's great. It's interactive. You get to choose what you're putting into it and, um, I totally, I totally understand that. It's great. Um, okay, so does that just copy when I do that? I don't I know. So Notion is weird. I should probably turn it this into like a doc, like an actual doc. Oh, oh Gozi says it's a great session. Thanks, Gozi. Yeah, thank you, Gozi. I oh, like you how you can see the comments. Yeah, I didn't see the comments. Oh. 
Thanks for joining. I think we have 12 people on here. Yeah, super cool. That's a, that's what they call a, I guess, a, a pandemic party. <laughs> Joke's all night. Um, all right, so I want to run the statement itself. Oh, wait, what uh, happened? Did I mess something up? Did I not? Oh, it, mm, can you, how do you get out of this? Can you do a semicolon? Try doing a semicolon. I didn't mess things up for a, a little bit. So the copy paste didn't work, right? Uh, yeah, that paste didn't work. Yeah. Uh, can you try retry copy pasting? You know what? I'm gonna be. I'm gonna do capital. No, 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 no. Like actually copy paste it again. Oh, copy. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Copy paste. I'm gonna press enter. No, it's not doing it right. Uh, hmm. let, me, let me try just copying it. Oops, sorry. Oh, and also a new thing that, I, that Amrucha told me before this live session, all you have to do is press the up key, the up arrow key, and it copies your last statement, correct? Yep. Which is great. That's something I, I, I did not know before. So now I know. Uh, you still need to get out of it. So do the semicolon thing again. Semicolon. Do semicolon. OK, and now try pacing and don't press enter yet. Let's see what is messing up. OK, I think this should work. OK. Enter. Yay, it did. Yeah. Awesome. Good job. Awesome. We're doing it. We're doing it. It's very exciting. Yeah, it is. Um, I want to get a dog just to have okay. my name in, in in this in the application itself. Hmm? I, I would like to get a dog so I can put my dog's name and look my location and all that into the application. So yeah. All right. Um, Do, you dog, you? Huh? Do you have a dog? No, I don't. I really want one. Uh, but I think I'll have to move if I have to get a dog because the owner wouldn't allow it, I think. New York City. New York City, yeah. Um, Dan says, can you zoom in and zoom into your screen a bit? Um, the into the the no, I think the Notion screen. Perfect. Better? Yeah. Perfect. All right. Thank you, Dan. Okay. So now, so we did. Now we are going to actually go into location of New York, so specific location. Correct. Right. Like name from dogs that are living where in location being New York. Yes. All right. Oh, I should probably post a link to this dog. Great, and so then we can see the names. We have Pete, Carl, Dagny, who are and living in- Maria's dog. Say again? Dagny is Maria's dog. Really, Dagny, I like the name. Yeah. I I, I personally, I, I kind of like love, I love dogs that have like human names, like for example, like Joe. <laughs> That'd be great. Um, so, okay, then, so we have location being New York, then we can update the set mm -hmm. to being um, WFH. Work from home, Look. sorry, I should have spelled that out. Ah, very cool. So work from home mm -hmm. and New York. So these are our, everyone who's working from home in New York, their dogs? No, so my, I went too deep into this dog lore. So my idea was that everybody was first located in New York, like PD, Carl, Dagny, everybody was located in New York. But PD moved to Virginia uh, with Lauren and Piyush. Uh, oh, Dami, sorry, I have been pronouncing the name the whole time. I'm so sorry. Um, How do you pronounce oh, it? It's Danny? Downey? Jessica is posting in the chat. Downey. Today I learned how to pronounce the. Ah. 
Oh, I, I'm not really like looking at the chat itself. This is great. Yeah. Great. Wonderful. Cool. Cool. Good to know. Um, right. Okay. So what I wanted to do is that update every for everyone's location to work from home when we moved uh, remote because almost nobody is in New York anymore. So that's what the statement is doing is we are for everyone who was in New York, we are updating their location to work from home. Okay. Wonderful. Copy and paste into the terminal. Cool. Nice. Great. Uh, actually, before we do the next statement, which will delete from the database, let's see if it actually like it uh, did the right thing. So, can you do the last statement first, the select star from dog statement, just to see all the data in the, in the table right now? Um, and that's if I just do the up key, like the last my last statement that I wrote. No, no, no. in uh, the last statement in the Notion doc. Sorry. Um, that is, sorry, say that again for me. Am I in the right place in the terminal or, uh, in the actual, the, the page here that we have interact with data. So the last statement in the interact with data, uh, section, the select star from docs, the last one. Go down. Oh, the last one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was thinking, there we go. Perfect. Great. Yep. Uh, can you expand your terminal a bit to the right so we can see the proof? Cool. So this is all the data that we have for the dogs at Copper Labs is that we gave them unique IDs and then we have their names and we have the uh, humans. Uh, that they belong to and their locations, and we did not add any information about the favorite awesome. tree. Awesome, great, that's just, so cool. I know, right? Just like making sure that things are working the way they're supposed <laughs> to. <Phew>. Yeah, <laughs> but that's awesome. That's great. It's it's. I'm I'm very impressed just how how really easy it is to get this going. Yeah. Uh, I for somebody like me who doesn't know anything, so. Yeah, no, you have been doing really, really well. I'm so impressed. I, I, I'm very happy to have you uh, helping me out here. So uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, okay. And then the uh, final thing is to, so we put data into the table. We inserted data. We read data using the select statement. We updated the information uh, for the location. And now the last thing to do, which always breaks my heart, is to delete uh, data from the database. And the only dog I feel comfortable enough to do that for is PD, because she's my absolute favorite, but she wouldn't mind. So uh, let's delete, uh, let's run the last statement. Sorry, PD. And I think, I don't Sorry, know. Sorry, PD, I love you. Yeah, PD, we're, we apologize for this, but forgive us. All okay. right. Why? Um, okay, try, try pressing enter. The syntax went all weird. Okay, but it did delete it. I don't know why it did the syntax thing, but it worked. And it deleted, right? Yeah. So we can yeah. check if it did that. Uh, so if you do select star from dogs again, like just press the up arrow key, I think twice. That's so cool. I like I know, right? but that's awesome. Oh, great. Uh, okay, so see. then run that. Yeah. So now we see that PT's data is no longer there. So we successfully deleted data. Good job. All right. Yeah. Wow. What a session. Yeah, this is cool. So uh, just to like revise what we did, we installed Cockroach DB, we spun up a single node cluster, we connected to the built-in SQL client, and we created a database, created a table, inserted data, read data, updated data, and deleted data. Everything you need to know about SQL. There we go, and in and, and less than an hour, I think, right? Yes, in like 51 minutes. Yeah, that is pretty incredible. Um, and again, for me, who, who really has no knowledge 
at all, as you can probably see going through this session, if you stuck around with us, um, you can see I didn't really know what I was doing, but I don't know, I feel like even right after having one session like this, I feel a lot more comfortable going ahead and, and, and continuing on to do some more work with this. Obviously having you around as well is really helpful. Um, so thank you so much, Amruta. Um, and yeah, I guess to kind of just have a little bit of an outro, um, really the point of, of this session is, again, for those um, who are maybe students, you're learning about CockroachDB, um, you wanna just see a salesperson suffer, uh, suffer through something, that this is this is really a kind of a session for you. We, I really hope you had fun. Uh, I know I had a lot of fun, so um, I hope equally you guys all had fun as well, those who, who joined us. Um, and again, with CockroachDB, we wanna make this, the database that somebody chooses um, for their applications when they're developing something as a hobby, whether that be for hobbies, as Amruta mentioned earlier, um, or you are building out an enterprise kind of application that is scaling multiple regions. You need to have resilience, make sure that your database survives anything. That's really where we get our name, uh, Cockroach Labs from. Um, and having a database that speaks SQL, easy to use, um, and, and, and being able to also, an interesting feature as well, it's worth mentioning is geo partitioning, which we didn't really get into at all uh, today, but maybe in the future, who knows, um, which is a really great feature as well. That really ties the data to specific row levels. And um, by doing that, you're adhering to certain data privacy laws and having low latency for your users that are using your application. So some really neat stuff we're doing at Cockroach Labs um, and we're excited as this journey kind of continues to move forward and, and have um, uh, more recognition out there because uh, we're doing something that's really awesome. And uh, it's it's fun technology to use, as you can see. And um, we hope that maybe you'll join us for another session. If not, get started on Cockroach University uh, just for fun. Just get started. Enjoy it. Um, super easy to sign up. It's free. So uh, hope to see some more people who are familiar with Cockroach DB and, uh, and have some fun downloading uh, downloading it onto your computer. And again, you can do it with your laptop. It doesn't matter. So uh, thank you. Any 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 last things to say on your end, Amruja? Yeah, you covered everything so well. Uh, thanks everyone for joining. And I hope this was fun and helpful. Thank you. Have a great weekend, everyone. Stay safe. Have fun. Goodbye. Bye.